All right, last stop. I have to cut an internal keyway inside the uh, adapter piece. Uh, this will actually be the first time I've used my shaper for something other than just playing around. So I've got tool set up. You see it's pointing upward because I prefer it pointing downward, but in order to grab it in the vise, it didn't have enough uh, didn't have enough meat for me to trust it. So I'm cutting upward. I've got the carriage locked or the, the clapper locked rather. So now I need to find the center. So in order to do that, this is the nice thing about having a DRO on my shaper. All I need to do is move over until I can see it touch. There, go ahead and zero X, and we'll come over the opposite way. And there's our touch there. So, I'll go ahead and use the half function, and we're in the middle. All right, so the math works out to 55 thousandths in either direction. That's half the uh, keyway width minus half my tool width. It's a one eighth inch tool bit. Okay. Bring the table down so we start to make contact. Which is there. Zero our Y and our depth is 118 thousandths. So we'll just feed that slow. Make it 120. And then we bring the table back up. We feed over 55 thousandths in the other direction.
and that's that. Keyway cut. <clears throat> Now the only parts I have left to make are the keys themselves. I'm going to go ahead and make them off camera and I'll bring you back for the final assembly. All right, I made the keys. Um, this one I made out of steel. I decided to make this larger one out of aluminum. Just given how thin walled this is, I'd rather have, well, I'd rather have the key wear out than that. Um, I mean, if it doesn't last, obviously I'll make it out of something better. Um, so I have the bearing going the correct way, or at least the way that I want it to. So I guess now it's nothing left to do but put it together. So. I just had a random machine handle laying around. It's just one off of, uh, I think it was off the, somewhere off the mini lathe. A one-way bearing keeps it from turning the other way. All right, let's go ahead and get it hooked up to the DRO. All right, got the DRO, ho DRO hooked up. Let's go ahead and bring the W axis back up. Our counts per inch is still correct. Here. It's not much backlash in that bearing. Now that may even just be flexibility, the whole thing. But that's more, I mean, that's more to prevent mistakes than anything, because usually you're just going to want to stay going in the same direction anyway. So. So with initial testing done, it's time to actually calibrate things. Now, given that this is an overseas uh, rotary table, the 90 to 1 ratio uh, between the handle and the table is probably 90-ish turns to 1. So we'll actually, you know, I'll actually calibrate it just to make sure. Now in order to do that, I need to know how many turns of the crank handle uh, that we actually make for one revolution. So to calculate that, we need to change our pulses per our counts per revolution. So it's 14,400 counts per revolution of the encoder itself. And we want to divide that into one single circle uh, 
so it's uh, 14,400 uh, times 360, which gives us 5,184,000. Five So that should give us one count for every turn of the encoder. So the next thing to do is to zero out the indicator on this parallel I have clamped down. Make sure that we have enough space to clear things. Okay, that's zero. Zero out the W axis. start cranking. Okay, we're getting close. Bring the indicator back down. Well, we're a little past, but well, it actually is 90. All right. So, that being the case, we can go back in and change our number back to... Oh, wrong. to 1,296,000. Okay. And we should be accurate. All right, well, there it is. All assembled, installed and tested, calibrated. Seems to work all right. And I can't wait to have a project to use it up for. Um, that's all for now. Thanks for joining me on this project, and I'll see you on the next.